Hello, my friends. We're back for day two of doodles. Um, how to do with yesterday's with the rounding corners. I, like I mentioned in that video, I find people often either really love that part or hate that part. So if you loved it and found that you're really able to relax while doing those rounding corners, awesome. If you hated it, that's okay too. You don't have to do it. I like to do it because it changes, um, it kind of changes the visual look of that scribble. And it goes from looking less like a scribble to looking more like it has shapes and, and things in it. So for me, I like the relaxation of rounding corners and I like that they change it just a little bit. But like I said, if you don't want to do it going forward, you don't have to do it. It's okay. You never know if you're going to like these pieces until you try it. So um, before we actually start drawing, um, the whole rounding corners things often brings up a comment that I hear a lot and that is my lines aren't straight my lines are squiggly um, I went out of the lines when I was coloring in the rounding corners okay okay there's nothing wrong with that um, I would like you to think of this as play we're not creating gallery art right here right now the whole point of doing this is to learn a drawing technique that you can do regardless of your skill level and that has a unique ability to help you relax and de-stress. Okay? Think of, think of creating these drawings almost like a journal. I know I show mine on social media. You don't have to. Nobody ever has to see this if, they, if you don't want them to. So if your lines are a little bit squiggly, it's okay. If you go out of the lines while you're coloring, that's okay. If you don't like the way that looks, add another line, cover it up. Put a doodle there, cover it up. It's okay. And if you don't ever want to show it to anybody, don't. You know, my you're going to see here in just a little bit, when I do, my lines aren't perfectly straight either, and that's okay. Part of the charm of these type of doodle drawings is that there's so much going on in them that draws your eye, so much for you to look at, so much for you to see. Nobody ever notices if lines are a little bit squiggly or there's something a little bit out of the line in coloring. It's just part of the charm of it. Okay? So with that, I'm going to change my camera angle. We're going to start drawing tonight. I'm going to show you two doodles and um, you'll get to practice those a little bit before tomorrow and we'll add some more to it tomorrow. So um, you're Squiggle drawing that might look like kind of a hot mess right now is going to start to take on some character tonight. Um, I would like you to keep in mind while you're doing these tonight, when you're practicing the doodles and doing more on your own, um, keep the same thought in mind that we did last night with the rounding corners. Breathe while you're doing it. Put on some nice music. Turn the TV and the news off for a few minutes. You don't have to finish anything in one sitting. Do it for five or ten minutes and get up and do something else if you want to and come back to it. Make it, make it something fun for you. Okay? So with that, I'm going to turn the camera and we'll get started. Okie dokie. Let's get started with our two doodles for tonight. Um, before we do that, I want to add one more supply to what you use tonight. So you've got your paper. You've got whatever pens you're drawing with. Um, I would suggest you also grab a Kleenex or a piece of paper towel or even um, another piece of paper, something like that. And the reason why, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, this one actually doesn't look like the one I started last night. This is the one I started last night, and here's what happened. The pens I'm using are ballpoint gel pens, so they don't dry very quickly. And I am notorious for dragging my hand through wet ink, which is exactly what I did here. Sometimes you can cover that up with doodles. These are pretty big um, smears. So I went ahead and started over so that I would have a clean one to work on for you. So if you grab yourself a Kleenex, a piece of paper towel, an extra piece of paper, whatever, you can use it to set over pieces of your drawing to put your hand on while you're drawing. So if there is some wet ink over here, it's going to get absorbed into the paper towel and you won't be smearing it with your hand. So you might want to have that going forward because we're going to be adding a good bit of ink to these moving forward. The two doodles I'm going to show you tonight are this one 
and this one. And you can see here I've done it in sets of two, but it's quite versatile. You can do however many of them you want. This one, there's three of them together. And on this one, I did this whole half circle in it. And I, I love this one because it's really easy to do, but it adds a lot of visual depth to your drawing. So we'll do that one first. Um, with where your drawing sits right now, there really is no rhyme or reason to where we're going to put these. That's part of the fun of a doodle drawing is that you start adding things to it, things that maybe don't even um, seem like they go together. And the more you add, the better it gets, the more fun it gets, the more interesting it gets. So I don't have a predetermined plan. Yours isn't going to look like mine, so you're not going to be able to copy exactly what I'm doing. So I'm just going to kind of look at this for a minute and see what's talking to me. Immediately off the top, this stretch right here is kind of talking to me. And so I think I'm going to do that doodle, um, maybe not in all of them, maybe in this one and this one and maybe up into this one. So to do this doodle, I'm going to take the first section I'm doing it in and I'm going to split it in half. And since this one comes down to a point, I'll start kind of at the halfway spot and just bring it down to that point. If yours doesn't come down to a point, maybe yours is more like this shape. You could do the same thing, just half and half approximately. It doesn't have to be exact. We're not measuring. We're not trying to make them exact. So... Pick a spot on yours where you want to do this doodle. If you need to turn your paper so that you've got a better drawing angle, please do that. It doesn't have to stay facing the same direction all the time. <clears throat> so for this first one, I'm going to make two upside down U's. One there, and then I'm going to start right where I stopped and do another one here. So almost like a, maybe an M, a really curvy M. And I'm going to go down just a little bit from that, and I'm going to do the same thing again. So it almost looks like little bands going across there. I've still got room down here, so I'm going to do it again. A little upside down U's or, or an M, however you choose to think of it. And then in those bands, more towards the center line than the outside line, I'm just going to draw two straight lines. Those two straight lines are going to end up being the highlight. So we're going to leave those white. We're not going to color those in. And then everything else around it, I'm going to color in black. And you'll see as you get this colored in, very quickly, that made the illusion of depth in that particular space on my drawing. And the depth comes from the contrast of the dark that I'm coloring in and those two little white lines that we left. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here. Now when I'm doing this one, I like to round off the top of my drawing as well. So I'm going to come up here at the top and I'm just going to kind of round this off a little bit more. So I'm just extending where that rounded corner was. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to round off those corners where that new line that I added meets. So you can see really quickly that added dimension to that. This one over here that didn't go to a point, I'm going to do the exact same thing. And you can see that it's larger at the top than it is at the bottom. That's perfectly fine. And before I do that one, I'm going to put my Kleenex over the top of that because I know that one's still wet and I don't want to drag my hand through it. But I'm going to do essentially the same thing. I'm just going to make a little bit bigger curved lines. And I don't know if you can see. Let me zoom in and show you. On this one, I've got a little tail hanging off. I didn't get it exactly on the line. That's perfectly fine because I'm going to color it in anyway. So you don't have to be really perfect with what you're doing because parts of these are going to get covered up as you're filling them in. 
And you can always go back and finish them off later, you know, smooth them out if you want to. So don't get caught up in whether or not it's perfectly on the line or meeting the line. Just enjoy the drawing part. So I did the same thing as last time. I put all my upside down U's and then I put vertical lines down the middle. And then I will color them in. I'm not going to color all those in right now because that takes time and I don't want these videos to be too terribly long, but you get the idea. That's going to come out looking just like this, only it's facing a different direction. So when you're doing these, not all of your doodles have to be going the same direction. Certainly turn your paper, look at it from all different directions and see what talks to you. Where looks like it wants you to put that kind of doodle. And you would just do that everywhere that it kind of talks to you. Okay. As I'm starting to do these doodles, I often find there are areas that start calling me like this little area right here. You can see that after I rounded all my corners, it left little tiny spaces. There's really not much you can do with that, so I'm just going to color that in completely. So as you start to add doodles, if there's areas that when you look at them, you think, I, you know, I just really want to color that whole thing in. I want it all to be black. I want it to be dark. That contrast of light and dark is part of what adds interest to your drawing. So don't be shy about filling things in or even changing the shape of things. Um, for instance, this little guy over here, the more I look at that, the more I'm wanting that to be a circle or to at least have a circle in it. So again, I'm going to put that down so I don't drag my hand through wet ink. And I'm just going to take my pen and add a line there to make more of a circle. And then I'm going to color the rest of this in. So you're going to have spots as you're going through here kind of, kind of talk to you. Be open to ideas that come to you. They don't necessarily have to make sense. But if an area of your drawing is, is, you know, saying, I want to be darker, I want to be colored in, or I want to have lines here, absolutely go ahead and do that. Um, the doodles that I'm showing you throughout the course of doing this are ones that I like because they're, they're not only quick and easy to learn, but they add a lot of visual impact. So you, you really get, I think I said yesterday, a lot of bang for your buck with them. But they're certainly not the only doodles on the planet, and I will talk... Um, in the last video about where to get more ideas. So there, you can see I colored that in. So as you start to add these things, this is going to start to come together and start to look more interesting. Um, off camera, again, just because it takes time and I don't want these videos to be terribly long, I'm going to go through and probably add this same doodle here and maybe up here as well or maybe down here instead. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't quite decided yet. That's, that's part of the fun of this is just kind of stepping back and taking a look at it and saying, what areas are talking to me? So let me show you the other one for tonight, except I lost it and I don't know where it went. <laughs> there we go. The other one I'm going to show you is this one and a couple of variations on this one. This is another easy one to do but adds a lot of visual interest. So I'm going to come back and do some more of those later. But while I'm doing those, I'm also looking at other areas like maybe this one is where I'm going to do that doodle. And it is a really easy one to do. I'm going to outline that shape just a little bit off the original line. So I'm just essentially tracing that interior shape. And if your lines aren't exactly perfect and straight and not wiggly, that's okay. That's part of what adds interest to this. That's part of, part of what doodles are. So once I've got that shape outlined, I'm going to turn this just a little bit so I have a better drawing angle. I'm going to fill it in with straight lines. And I'm going to do these. Look, I just drug my finger through it. Um, I'm going to do these lines 
a little bit apart from each other. There's really no measurement on this. When I do it, I think about if I put those far enough, I could do another line in the middle if I wanted to comfortably. So that's kind of what I use as my measurement. And I'm just going from inside edge to inside edge all the way across. If your lines get a little further apart at some spots and a little closer together at others, that's perfectly fine. So I'm just going to fill that whole thing in. And then once I get it filled in, I'm going to come back and add some interest on the edges. I'm going to show you this one close up. Where'd it go? There it is. I'm going to come back and add some interest on the edges. You can see there's little tiny lines in between that don't go all the way across. They're just at the edges. So the way I'm going to do that is with my same pen, I'm going to start right at the edge and just real quickly make a stroke towards the middle, lifting my pen up as I go. And I'm going to vary the length of them. Some are going to be shorter than others. Some are going to be longer. And it's just kind of a, a quick Stroke lifting your pen up as you go so that it gets lighter at the end. And then I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing on this other edge. So what we're doing with this one is very quickly adding some depth to it. Where it's darker around the edges, it looks like those are further away. And where it's lighter in the middle, it looks like that's closer. So it almost looks like it's a little bit rounded. Kind of like these look a little bit rounded, only in a different way. Okay. I like this one because there's lots of variations you can do on this. Um, I think I'm going to do that one again over here. So same thing as before. I'm just going to outline the shape. Just a little bit inside of where the line is. Only this time, instead of doing straight lines all the way across like we did on the other one, I'm going to split this in half and do my lines two different directions. So I'm going to draw a line right across the middle. And on this top part, I'm going to do the lines one direction. And on the bottom part, I'm going to do the lines the other direction. So there's the top part. And you'll notice over here where the curve comes in, I just imagined, lift your pen up at that line and just imagine it going straight across and then put it back down where it picks up again. Okay. For the bottom piece of that one, I'm going to do them this direction. So it's the same basic concept that I just showed you. We're just switching up the direction of the lines. And you can play around with how many different line configurations can you come up with? And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come back and just add those little contour lines at the edges. Again, it's just a quick stroke. I am varying the length of them. And I'm going to do the same thing going this way. If your lines feel really wide, you could do two of those strokes in there if you've got room. Remember, turn your paper to make it easier so you have a good angle to draw at. And do the same thing on the other edge. And like I said, if they're not perfect, it's completely okay. Because there's going to be so much going on in this drawing by the time we're done that's going to draw people's eye. 
nobody's going to notice little line imperfections here and there. Inevitably, what I hear people say is, yeah, but I'll know it's there. Well, you will. But when you step back and take a look at this drawing overall, are you really going to care? No. <laughs> Don't nitpick your work. Enjoy your creations for what they are. Because I will tell you, there is not an art piece ever made in the history of art that's perfect. If you ask any artist to show you the errors in their piece of art, they will show you the errors. You might not notice them, but they know they're there. So don't nitpick your work. Okay? So there we go. Those are the two doodles for tonight. So what I would ask you to do is spend a little bit of time looking at your drawing and see which spaces call to you and do a couple of those here and there. Keeping in mind that we do still have, I think there's five more that I'm going to show you over the next couple of days. And we are going to leave some white space here and there because the contrast of that white space adds to the effect. So don't fill it all in. If you want to start another drawing so that you can do more, absolutely start another drawing. You don't have to finish this before you start another one. Um, so if you want to start another one to practice all of those, absolutely go ahead and do that. But, you know, just pick a couple spots here and there to do this one and a couple spots to do this one. Maybe play around with variations on that one. And do that until you've got a couple more spaces filled in. Remember, while you're doing that, um, take your time. You don't have to do these quickly. Take your time. Let yourself sink into the drawing. If you've got the TV or the news on behind you, turn it off. Turn it off, please, while you're doing this. Nothing's going to happen in 15 or 20 minutes while you do this that's going to alter the course of anybody's life. Turn the news off and just let yourself enjoy this time. Okay. Like we did yesterday with the rounding corners, narrate it for yourself if you need to, to keep your attention focused here. So you can tell yourself drawing a line, drawing a line, drawing a line, making a contour, making a contour, shading it in, shading it in. That keeps your mind focused here. And if your mind is focused here, all of that other stuff is going to leave it for a little while, and we need to have that break. That's part of the beauty of this. It's not something where you're trying to recreate um, something somebody else has done. You're not trying to make it look like something specific. It's just random and abstract, and you get to have fun with it. Okay? So for tonight, practice those a little bit. Uh, like I said, don't fill everything in. If you want to start another drawing to practice those more, start another drawing. And tomorrow, I will show you three more doodles. So we'll add three more into this. Um, I do like to skip around a little bit, so I've not got them all clustered together. But really, you get to decide what goes where. So practice a little bit tonight. Let yourself relax while you do it. Let yourself enjoy it. And I will be back tomorrow with three more doodles, and we'll add some more to it, okay? See y'all tomorrow. Okay, I have to add a PS real quick because I forgot to mention this before. <laughs> if your initial base scribble was more angular than mine, um, mine was really kind of rounded and swirly. If yours was more angular, you can still do those same doodles. You can do them curved if you want. There's nothing wrong with having an angular base and curved doodles. Or you can make the doodles angular. Instead of having curved lines for these, just make them straight up and down like these. And these lines, these don't really change much because they're just straight lines. So they go whether it's angular or curvy. So I just wanted to mention that real quick. If your base scribble was much more angular than mine was to start with, you can just modify these doodles a little bit to make them angular. Or you can do them curvy. It will, it will work either way. Okay, so there we go.